proud to present here at Jet Cove, Stephanie Surrettes, because she had to. Dramatized and produced by Sean Hasbury. Enjoy. Because she had to. By Stephanie Surrett. Because she had to, she woke up in the morning, and it was gone. She thought that she might be able to get it back, but the doctor told her, no. It had disappeared before, then returned. So she saw no reason to worry. Not coming back this time was unthinkable. Several days passed, and still she hoped it would return, as she stumbled her way through her everyday tasks in total darkness, because she had to. She slipped into a deep depression because she'd lost it. She made messes where once, she had made none when pouring things. She did not cook because, she was afraid she would burn it. Her story time with her kids was now left for her husband because, she couldn't see to read their favorite books. She kept plodding along in spite of all of that though, because she had to. It's Friday night, and her husband wants to take her out, on a date. He says we haven't had one in a long time. He says, so she goes, because she has to. The waiter, at the little restaurant where they always go, takes their orders. She tries to meet his gaze when she gives him hers, but she can't. She doesn't know where his gaze is, but she tries. She has to go to the bathroom. Her husband takes her hand to lead her there. No big deal. Because that's just how close they are. Except, no one tells her that there's a step coming up, and she falls on her face in the middle of the restaurant. She is sure everyone is staring at her, which just makes her face become redder, and redder. Someone asks her if she's okay, and she nods after she gets up. She keeps on walking towards the bathroom, even though, all she wants to do is turn around and leave. Instead she forces herself to stay, because she has to. It has been months, and she's still in bed. It's no big deal. The house can run itself without her, but they could really use her income. She has been fired from her job of 10 years because her lack of vision made the work she was doing completely impossible, or so her boss told her. So she lay out there, because she had to. She hasn't the energy to do anything else. A group of friends are around her now. They're telling her about all of these things that exist for blind people. They've been reading her brochures, and information from websites for the past hour and a half. Finally, one of them takes her hand and says, I know it's scary. I remember when I lost my sight, but you can do it. Just get up off your butt, and do it. Late that night, she stares blankly at the computer screen. She wishes she could use it again. She misses being able to scroll through the pages, and find all the information that she could ever want. So why then, did she ever not Google blindness? Why had she never known about any of this before? because she hadn't needed to, that's why. She had been one of those sighted people that felt sorry for them, believing them to be incapable of doing anything for themselves. Until she had become one of them herself, and her friends convinced her that what she previously thought was wrong. But wasn't it impossible to do the stuff she'd previously done? How could she ever learn to cook, clean, and would she ever be able to get a job again? She picks up a printed page, and decides to wait until morning to call the number a friend left for her. Because she has to. She can't read anymore, so, she has to wait for someone who can. Through places she didn't even know existed before, she enters a program that will teach her how to cook, clean, do laundry, and whatever else she desires. The program lasts for nine months. While there she goes whitewater rafting, rides a motorcycle, goes mountain climbing, and skiing. Those were all things she never thought she could do again, but she does them now because she has to. The instructors encourage her. They teach her how to use the white game. In wood shop she makes a wooden dog for her daughter who has always wanted a dog, but has never gotten one. The goal is to make you as independent as possible. They tell her over, and, over again. So she does these things mostly by herself, because she has to. Because they don't baby her here, and they don't even feel sorry for her. They don't feel sorry for her, because, they've been there. 
they've had to do it for themselves already, and now, it's her turn. They teach her how to cook. They give her measuring cups that are all different sizes instead of just one with all the sizes listed, measuring spoons with braille on them, and something called a liquid level indicator. She didn't know what it was exactly, until she had to pour hot liquid, and they told her to slide it onto the cup at the level that she wanted the liquid to stop. She was amazed. When the liquid reached the indicator, the indicator vibrated. They teach her how to pour cold liquids, dry ingredients, and to measure them using her finger. She does it, because she has to. She decides, she wants to learn braille, so she can read to her kids at night like she used to. So they give her a slate and stylus, and begin teaching her. It is hard to learn, and sometimes she wants to give up, but she doesn't. She keeps going because she had to. She wants to get a job when she gets back home. It is a necessity in order to pay their bills. So, they begin teaching her how to use a computer with a screen reader on it. She learns that it is hard to do everything with just the keyboard, and not the mouse. Never the mouse. Not, now. But she does it, because she has to. When she arrives back home, she is surprised to learn that her husband has received some training of his own. She gets off the plane expecting to have to show him the proper way to do sighted guide. So she is pleasantly surprised when he says, take my arm. She does it, because she has to, and, the airport is crowded. They're on another date night. When the same waiter, the same one as before, asks them what they would like, she waits patiently for her husband to order. She is no longer surprised when a waiter looks at her sighted husband, and says, and what would she like? Whereas before, she didn't know how to handle it, and just stood there silently while whoever was with her ordered her food. Now, she just smiles, and says she would like the lasagna with pepperoni pizza, and you, sir? Her husband whispers to her that the waiter's face has turned a bright shade of red. She is still laughing when the waiter comes back with her order, and sets it down in front of her. She uses her knife to cut up her food, and her fork to chase it around the plate. Sometimes, her fingers get involved especially, when she drops some on the table. She uses them to help guide the fork to the food by holding the food still, so she can pick it up with a fork. Sometimes, she'll actually move the food towards whatever silverware she happens to be using with one hand, while picking it up with the silverware. She does it because she has to, and, because, she can.